What's up everybody, it's Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions and Studio1Tutorials.com and today we're going to be looking at console mixing inside Studio One. What's up everybody, it's Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions and Studio1Tutorials.com. Don't forget to stop by Studio1Tutorials and check out Savage808. It's a sub. Um, today we're going to be looking at a little quick mixing tutorial, something that I've been doing a lot recently. Um, I have the uh, I have the Slate Everything Bundle, which is just an amazing, amazing, amazing value for what you get for it's, it's like 15 bucks a month. I got it um, during Christmas, so I paid the whole year up front, and um, you know, just these super high quality uh, analog. Um, uh, model plugins that they're just they're, they're better or you know up there with anything out um so the the way that i use them first of all when you use plugins like the slate stuff and the uad stuff and and the wave stuff that's analog modeled um what a lot of people don't uh do uh, is properly gain stage their projects and that um that leads to the plugins not working right so you don't really get the most out of them so the first thing that i do when i you know when i get my um my project set up i've this is a beat um that i made and it was in midi originally and what i like to do um is i'll 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 when i when i'm done making the track i'll go to i'll go to save as and um and uh save as save as the file name then mix then i'll go to export stems and um go to tracks that way all the uh, all the eqing and stuff that i've already done that the sound design wise to um to get the stuff to sound the way i want it that way i don't have to redo it in the mix i'll, I'll select tracks and then anything that's a midi track which will have like a little keyboard next to it i'll bounce that out the audio stuff you obviously don't need to bounce out because it's already an audio and then i'll have import to track set so that way when the stuff comes out I just delete all the instruments and then I'm back. I have I have my CPU processing power back. Um, you know, I don't have 30 omnispheres running or anything. And it lets me um, go ahead and um, process all this stuff. So um, the next thing that I do, you know, you know, once I have that set up is, is just get the gain staging properly. And uh, what, I, what I'll do is I'll go to post right here. And you, you can put this on your mix box or whatever. I just put it on post because it's the, um, you know, you know, it's the last thing in the chain. Uh, VU meter is a free plugin that you get on PreSonus. Just go there uh, and, uh, and download it. Um, and then what you want to do is you want to set this to um, 18. And what this does is the uh, analog consoles um, are um, negative 8 dB in uh, in um, in the digital realm is zero in the analog realm. And um, the reason why doesn't fucking matter. Just th that's th that's what it is. So um, what you got to do to get these plugins to act correctly um, you know, because they are modeled after after the analog world is you want to we're just going to highlight everything. I'm going to pin this right here and you want to make sure that you can turn your whole track down so that all this stuff isn't clipping. Now, I don't want to do a bunch of work on my faders because I want them to have, you know, maximum resolution for um you know for the process so what i'm going to do is like see see right here i you know in the track and um you know this is when i was you know this is when i was creating so uh what i'm going to do is let me just collapse these is i'm going to get my my faders back to back to unity and the way that i'm going to do this see how this is negative 16.7 so i'm just going to go and grab a mix tool plugin where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Grab mix tool plugin, drag this down to, you know, negative 16. I'll go ahead and drag this one over. This guy was sitting at, I dragged him down like two, like almost two dB. And then I'll set him over. Bring this guy over here. This is negative 18. And what I'm doing is the the amount that I'm pulling the fader down, I'm you know, I'm offsetting it with this uh you know with this trim knob. 
that way and you know just if you have two mixed tools in a row like it, it, it doesn't matter it's this plugin takes up no cpu it's just you know it's just a volume like yeah i could go in there and and you know do you know do a little bit of subtraction and use you know use just one but don't just don't worry just don't get stuck on that what you want to do is you want to get your faders all at unity um this perk loop is all the way down because i'm just using i'm just using the reverb um I, I don't want to actually have that perk loop in so that's why this is that's why this is all the way down so i've got my track you know balanced from the from the actual vst mix but you see the way i'm clipping um i don't want that i want to you know i want to get this right so what i'm going to do is rather than pull all this down um on the faders you check this box right here and that's your gain um, as long as you have all the tracks highlighted they'll it'll all um, turn down equally so I'm just gonna go through and check different parts of the song All right, so good. I'm not clipping anymore, so I don't, I don't, even, I don't even really need this plugin anymore. I'm just gonna remove it. Um. Now that's so I've got my gain set up right. Now you might look at at the screen and be, be like, "Man, my waves are all small. Can't work like this." Uh, Studio One knows that is um, is a deal breaker for some folks. So you could just go. And use this right here it'll magnify the actual waveforms but it won't change the volume at all see so you see how stuff looks like it's clipping it's not if you don't have the VU meter and you just want like a quick hack as long as you're not peaking above negative 12 you're gonna be in um, you know in that in, in that negative 18 um, range as far as that that's a studio one meter i don't know if that um if that necessarily translates so the dawes so um the next thing that i do is just get my busing right i'm just going to go ahead and all the red tracks are set to my drum bus this is a template that i've created you go to studio one tutorials.com it's at it's on the landing page um show you how to create the template no problem um so yeah just go ahead and send this all to drums so now I've got my routing correct, boom. Um, there's a couple other things that I do, like for example, um, I have a preset where I take and uh, I, have an, I have an 808 sidechain that I use. Um, and this is, this is independent of the slate setup. I don't do the, um, I, I like the way the Studio One compressor works with the, um, with the actual side chaining and just and just the way that it works with the 808 um i'm satisfied with it so i see no need to use a more exotic plugin for it and then i have a um this is a kick that i use a lot so i have i have a preset set up for um you know actually side for the side chain of the kick too and if you guys want to see um you know a tutorial about um how how I actually set all this up and why I do why why I do it the way that I do it go just go to studio1tutorials.com hit the mixing tab um, I show how to do it there on a couple tutorials um, and so now so now I have all of the all of the plugins that I'm going to use that aren't um, in my slate console setup so that's important because the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and add the um, the slate uh, digital virtual mix rack to the first one and I have a preset set up it's called console and what it is is um, I've got it set up where I have a I have the slate virtual channel channel set to the British 4k or the SSL whatever um, and um, I've got a uh, I've got a FG 
um, 116, and then I've got the FGS, which is you know the their their uh, emulation of the SSL mixer. Now, it, you know, I don't have the it, it's not the exact same as like it, you know it's not an, a direct SSL console. These are the plugins um, that I like. Like this compressor is a good utility compressor. You can use it for anything. But the reason why I like this setup is because I have you, you know I've got console distortion you know a little harmonics right here i've got a compressor right here and then i've got an eq so everything that i need that i could possibly need to do to a track um short of any type of um uh, to get stuff to fit in the mix i have right here it's, it, it's in one console or one strip so it's good so after i do that i'll go ahead and just um highlight all the tracks and then drag one and you want to make sure that when you do this you drag it below um if you have plugins that that are going before this chain and just go ahead and drag it in below all that stuff and you'll see now doo -doo 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 -doo, i got it everywhere so the way that the way that i'll use this is just to get um just to get some flavor like for example on 808s what i really like to do is i just like to smash the um the meter on this one just go ahead and drive this get a little extra you know a little extra juice on it And um, another thing I like to do is like on the, uh, I like that effect also on on the pianos and uh, the more uh, realistic modeled instruments. And this just gives it more of, um, just more of like a, a more analog vibesy feel. And then, like, see here, this this guy, I'll, I'll want to. I know I'm gonna want to compress this. That's cool. Um, yeah. And then if you get if if you find that because you'll as you go through and you make your changes in the track i'm not gonna i'm not gonna do like a whole how to mix tutorial but um if if you find uh if you find that because a lot of times what will happen when i'm using this setup um is if if you drive um sometimes especially like if i'm making like a more grimier sounding track like this one's gonna sound like and i start driving these channels uh really you know a lot you'll get a lot of buildup of like some static which can be cool if that's what you're going for which a lot of times i like that but if you don't um you can you can kind of go through a couple of these or all of them and hit this noise reduction function and that'll help out with um with you know getting things to sit um a little bit better because you know once you put the limiter and everything on it um you'll get you'll get that type of vibe uh, the other thing that i like to add um on, on my on my mixing channel on my mastering channel is um i'll put the uh, i'll put the virtual tape machines and drive that a little bit and um also um 
also the bus channel from the you know from the actual um, con console strip but it depends on you know what's going on with the CPU sometimes sometimes I'll I'll, I'll print the mix and then um, and, and then put the tape machine in the and the uh, the FXG because um, these plugins can get a little CPU intensive as you can see but yeah this is the basic setup for you know for for how I like to use um you know uh, a console emulation setup with inside um, Studio One. I find that this stuff is it's just really it's just really great. Um, I don't mess around with the mi with the mix effects from um, Presonus because I just I haven't I, I haven't put the time in to research them and understand them. So please don't ask me in the comments why I'm not using those. But anyway, this is um, for you guys to have the slate stuff. I hope this has uh, been helpful for you guys. This is Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions Studio One Tutorials.com. Keep it simple. Don't be basic, and we'll see you on the next one.